Testing. All right. It looks like we are about ready to get started. Um, welcome to Sunday School. Obviously, it's a little bit different crowd. We've got some of our, I believe, fourth and fifth graders and some of our middle schoolers with us today. Welcome, guys. I hope you enjoy this. I am going to encourage you, if you want to get the most out of this experience, there are a lot of slides. So if you can't recognize the people on those faces, that might be an indication you're back a little too far. So especially you young ones, there's plenty of space to fill in up here. If you want to be able to see the pictures better, come on up, sit wherever you want. But if you want the best experience, the closer you are to see the slides is, is going to help that out a little bit better. Um, but uh, yeah, thanks for allowing the youth group to do this. We thought this might be a, a neat opportunity to share with the congregation what we did on our mission trip. Our mission trip was the last full week of June. We went to Pikeville, Kentucky uh, with a team called Experience Mission. Um, they organized everything for us, and uh, that's, that's where we headed. Four years ago, we went to Oakville, Virginia. Was anybody, is anybody in the room that was at Oakville for that trip? Elizabeth, were you there? Does that picture look familiar at all? A little bit, yeah. So there's, there's a place called Cooper's Rock that we stopped four years ago, and we stopped again uh, this year. Uh, it's just into West Virginia when you exit Maryland, heading out the top side of Maryland. Uh, it's about four hours into your trip, so we've kind of found that to be the, the place to stop and stretch our legs, and it's got a great overlook, and it's you know, a couple minutes off the, off the interstate. So that was the best group picture we had of the week, so that is, that is where that was from, just on our way out there at, there at Cooper's Rock. Uh, what you can expect this morning, we kind of broke our experience up into 14 categories because there was 14 of us that went on the trip. So you're going to hear from each of our youth about one of those categories. The youth that weren't over, able to be here actually put a video together for us so that you'll get to see a video of them talking about their, their assigned portion of the trip to, to share with you guys. Um, questions are great. Do not... Do not hesitate to say, hey, Kevin, what's a question? I'm going to MC the thing this morning and kind of keep things rolling. But if you guys have questions or want some elaboration on what we did, what we experienced, what did that look like, tell me more, that'd be great. Ask, ask myself, ask the, the person that's presenting, and that'll, that'll keep, things, keep things entertaining for you all. So uh, to get us started, let me make sure this is – Yeah. Pikeville, I do not know which county Pikeville is in. Pikeville is in the Appalachia area in the eastern, what they call eastern Kentucky. So this was coal mining area. This is a very low income poverty. And then a year ago they had a flood. And I don't want to steal these guys' stories, so I'm not going to talk too much about the flood and the poverty and all of that yet. But this is the, the Appalachian Mountains of Kentucky is the area, is the area we were at. So our first presenter is John Federoff, and he's not able to be here this morning. So, well, I'm John Federoff. I'm talking to you, talking to you from Westport, Washington State, on the Pacific Coast. It's 56 degrees here this morning. It's quite nice. I had the privilege of uh, taking, going, uh, assisting with uh, leading our youth on a six-day mission trip to Eastern Kentucky in the town of Pikeville in the Appalachians. It was, uh, our home base was First Presbyterian Church in, uh, in Pikeville. First Presbyterian Church is a huge church, brick, and uh, very nice church built. However, the membership is down to just 60 members and was uh, all over 60 years of age. The church was built on an over a million dollar plus inheritance from one of the members. The church uh, is happy, though, to uh, donate their facilities to experience missions over the summer, and also uh, they use it as a daycare during the winter uh, or school season. I want to tell you a little bit about Pikeville. Pikeville was founded uh, originally as a lumber town, and lumber was floated downriver, and uh, steamships would bring goods back to the town. Later, coal mining became the main draw, and uh, Railroads were built to haul the coal out. Uh, the main thing about uh, coal mining, though, and, and the lumber, they, both those industries eventually dried up. The uh, 
one of the big main things about uh, Pikeville is it's a uh, it had the what is known as the big dig or a Pikeville cut through, second largest uh, earth moving project only to the set, uh, Pama, Panama Canal. It uh, it moved uh, about 18 million cubic yards of dirt, I believe, and rock. It is 1,300 feet wide, 3,700 feet long, and 523 feet deep. The project took over 14 years and uh, it was completed in 1987. And as I said, it mainly started just to move the railroad out of the town, but they ended up moving not only the railroad, but the uh, uh, built a highway through there and relocated the river to try to alleviate, alleviate years of uh, flooding. Pikeville's uh, main draw now is the University of Pikeville, started in 1889 by a Presbyterian minister. It was started to provide a high school for, for the students in the area and opened, uh, as I said, in 1889 with 125 students who also helped build the original building. This school continued to expand throughout the years and now is a university it includes a medical and dental school. Interesting uh, fact about the school is it has 100% acceptance rate. Keep that in mind if you're looking for a college. Inscribed on the wall this in the center of campus is Psalm 121, one and two. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The people in Pikesville were incredibly nice. Everywhere we went, we just ran into people who were just friendly, welcoming, pleasant to talk to. Even our uh, experience at Lowe's, pick up lumber, was a pleasant experience. It, nothing like uh, my experiences at Lowe's locally in Chester County. While P Pikesville is a pretty nice town, a good bit of our work was uh, about an hour's drive south of Pikesville, very close to the Virginia border. And uh, they, they had some pretty heavy flooding and serious damage last year. I believe some of our other students are going to talk about that. Thanks and have a good day. All right, so that was a little bit about the town of Pikesville, what it was like. Uh, you, you noticed that he mentioned the, there's one college there that kind of during college season the town's thriving when it's not college season it's a ghost town we got there sunday night and walked around town and i think we saw one other family i think that's right and this was the whole town it's like walking through oxford and only seeing one other family it was it was almost creepy um but it was empty it's a college town and then when college comes in it fills up and it's bustling but a pretty nice town uh here's just a few slides john talked a little bit about Guys, you might have to help me here. There we go. Um, he mentioned the cut through. You can see there kind of how the mountain's been cut out. Pikeville wraps around the backside of there, and you see the highway coming from left to right on the bottom. Um, the next slide shows that was the main cutout that he was talking about there. So they said this was the second largest earth moving project next to the Panama Canal in the world that was ever done and that's kind of the area where we're in but they literally cut the mountain in half so they could reroute the highway the river and the railroad through the mountain instead of it going around and causing flooding to the town all the time whenever it rained hard so that that happened in the um, 70s I believe was when that when that project happened but just a little neat neat thing about Pikesville Go ahead and move through the next ones few pretty quickly. These were coal houses. This was not Pikeville, but this is a um, in the smaller towns when the coal industry came in. The coal industry actually built the homes for the people that lived in in Kentucky. So they were all matching. If you can look down the street there, every house is the exact same design, exact same window placement. Would have originally had the exact same porch. Some people made modifications, but there were multiple, multiple towns that had the same design because the coal company built the housing for the people that were that were working there. Keep rolling. Um, this is in the town of Pikeville. Just some of the sights and scenes around there. They had these little bears everywhere that that we enjoyed taking pictures with. It was a really neat town. It would have been more fun to have people in it at the time. All right, so next, Austin King's going to talk about the flooding. Yeah, 
my name is Austin King, uh, the Pikeville Flood. Uh, most of eastern Kentucky was flooded around this time last year, almost exactly this time this year. It was about 15 inches of rain in five days, which led to 39 deaths and widespread damage. Entire homes and parts of some communities were swept away by the floodwaters. And eastern Kentucky, as you might have saw, is mostly mountainous, so all the rainwater on the top of the mountains poured down into the valleys where most of the flood or most of the towns and residential areas were. Um, not everything we did down there was to help clean up or rebuild as most of it was cleaned up already, but we were still able to help most of the people who were affected by the flood and were still recovering like physically and around the neighborhood. And that's about as much as I have to say for the flood. I think we we're supposed to say a fun fact or something. I really enjoyed the coffee in the morning. It's the only thing that kept me alive. <laughs> so to explain a couple of these pictures, this was the one um, place we ate lunch at the one day. And you can't see, if you see the window there, there's a water bottle sitting beside of the window. And right beside the water bottle, there's a green sign behind it there. That was the flood level at that location. They had marked it on their, on their building where the, the flood level was. Can you go back to the night picture? Um, that shows the town at night. That was a town of neon that we went through there. Obviously, somebody grabbed that picture. We drove through the town of neon multiple times going to and from our job sites. So I happened to find that on online. I'm like, hey, I know exactly where that's at because we drove through that intersection so many times. Um, so imagine Oxford. I mean, that's, you know, it was a town a little bit smaller than Oxford having, having water levels um, to that height. So yeah, we'll go on to the next presenter, Gene. All right, this is Maria and Chloe King. They were not able to be here, so you get to watch another video. Hi, I'm Maria King, and I'm one of the youth leaders that got to go on the trip with the youth. The mission we worked with in Kentucky was called Experience Mission. They have mission locations in the States and also international. Some of you might remember a couple years ago, the youth group went to the Bahamas, and that was with Experience Mission. Uh, they do short-term stuff. They also do some longer immersion programs. Our leaders for our location were Mackenzie and Andrew. Both were college students, and they did a terrific job of juggling all the stuff that they had to juggle. I really appreciated the way they interacted with us and with the youth. They made a lot of effort to get to know us as a group and individually as well. EM connects people and communities with volunteers like us who want to serve. In their locations, they partner with local churches and organizations, and that's how they find the people that need the help. Between the training videos, the um, devotionals, and the nightly debriefing, they put a huge emphasis on listening and building relationships. So for us, sometimes that meant stopping the physical work we were doing and just sitting on the porch and talking to the people. And that's what stuck with me a lot, the priority that put on listening. Listening not just to form your response of what you're going to say, but listening to know and understand someone. Listening that shows the value like Jesus would, and that's what I'm going to remember most from this trip. Hi, my name is Chloe. Um, I'm one of the youth that was along on the trip. Um, uh, my mom mentioned that every night we would meet with Mackenzie and Andrew, and we would also meet with the other group that was with us from Ohio, which someone will be talking about later in the service. Um, so one night we met at the church. We just stayed at the church and met there. Another night we went to a park that was in downtown Pikeville. Um, Pikeville was where we were staying for the week. And um, the other nights we went to an outlook that kind of overlooked the whole town of Pikeville, which was really, really cool. And that was definitely my favorite spot to go. Um, the meetings would begin with the worship time led by Mackenzie and Andrew, who are super talented. They did an amazing job. Um, and after that, we would read a passage from James that we had also read that morning in our devotional. So that was really cool to kind of read everything twice and you would get a lot more out of it than you would think um, just from reading something more. Um, uh, so we would then take time to discuss what we had learned um, with others in the meeting. We would break up into little groups and debrief and just talk a lot about the passage, which I got to know people a lot better through that and it was just really cool to kind of see what different people took away. Um, then we'd get back into a big group and kind of discuss what we had already discussed as smaller groups. 
and that was just really cool to kind of see what everyone had been thinking and how they processed the passage differently. Um, we would close the meeting with prayer and then we would just hang out at the end, talk with other people from the other group that came from Ohio. And yeah, it was just a really cool time to get to know everybody and learn more about the Bible. Okay, there should be a couple photos. Um, you probably can't see them. That's Mackenzie and Andrew. That was the only photo I could find of them. But they were um, college students. I believe one was 19, one was 20. And they were there by themselves running the whole ship. Um, it was pretty impressive to see them do what they did because they were only a couple of years older than, than the group of youth that we took. But they, they had to go out in the community and meet the people. They had to organize the projects, organize the lumber. They would actually make most of our meals themselves. The two of them would make the meals for the whole group that was there. Um, you know, so they just had a lot on their plate, but it was a, just a blast getting to know them, um, hearing their stories. Andrew was from Colorado. Mackenzie was from Kentucky, actually, so it was kind of close to her heart to be able to come back home and, and work for um, people, at least in her state. Uh, so that was just, just a fun experience getting to know them. Uh, continue. That's that was the lookout that Chloe referred to, where we had had worship at, which is pretty cool. If you want a spot to build a church or go to worship, it's always fun when you're up on a mountain and can see see out across. Um, just a shot of our worship service. All right, and Cameron Horse wasn't able to be here either, so he's got a short video on what the travel experience was like for all of us. My name is Cameron Horst. I am from Northeast Maryland, and I'm talking about traveling. We had a 15-person van, and we had 15 people, and so for an eight-hour trip, it was pretty squished. Uh, but we got there all safely. Um, when we were actually doing mission work, we would take out. We would usually all get in the van. Sometimes we'd drop people off, but we'd just go to individual drops usually and do our work drive home and then on the way back same thing 15 people eight hour trip kind of got squished but we made it back all alive and uh yeah we're all living thank you <laughs> so you can see what cameron's highlights of the trip are go ahead and go through there's quite a few uh, it's easy to take pictures when you're traveling so you can watch those but um Cameron's high, or high, remembrances were it was 15 people in a 15 passenger van. I'll correct them. It was 14 people in a 15 passenger van, but it was still squished. Uh, but it was it was a good time. We did all make it back alive, as he said. Uh, but that's that's where memories are made. Um, Ethan was supposed to be our next presenter. Ethan didn't even provide a video. So show the next picture. If you don't know Ethan, this is Ethan. Next week, I think it would be amazing if about 40 people came up to Ethan and made him share about his trip to you personally, because that's what he deserves. He knew he was supposed to do a video. He didn't get it to us. So let's harass him. All right. So Ethan was going to share about the food we ate and the, the people from Ohio. There was a group from Ohio. It was actually an adult group that came down. So it was, it was our waterway group and a group of I don't know, eight or nine people from Ohio, um, adults, and between the two groups, we would split up and accomplish the projects they had for us from the day to day. So it was, we got to know some of them um, and kind of got to do our worship time with them and things like that. And then um, as far as food and things like that, um, we ate most of our meals at the church. We would pack our lunches to take with us before we left the church each day. Um, and they did encourage us. Uh, we ate out a couple times. They encouraged us, hey, if, if you guys want to support the local community and, you know, eat at the, the little restaurant or something and you have funds for that, to go ahead and do that. So we were able to do that as well. Go ahead, G. Keep in mind, this next one. So now we're getting into kind of our work sites, what we did, the people we interacted with. Um, Katrina's going to share a video here about what that looked like. Good morning. My name's Katrina Martin, and I'm one of the youth leaders that got to go on the trip with the youth. I have the privilege of talking to Kate about Kate. We went to her house Monday and Tuesday morning. She had had a stroke. Uh, she's only 35 years old, and because of the stroke, it has really affected her talking 
and her whole right side was paralyzed. She also had a five-year-old girl, Ivy, and an eight-year-old boy, Fletcher, and so she had to have someone in the family come in and help her not only take care of them, but also help her just with getting ready and um, moving around the house and that kind of thing. Uh, she had a deck in the back and also a walking bridge that had been ruined because of the flood. So the youth worked on um, setting up a new deck and also redoing the walking bridge. Her parents lived on the other side of the creek and so that was her only way of being able to go over and visit them because she was in a wheelchair. Um, so she was really excited about being able to finally go out on her back deck and watch the kids as they swam in the creek and then also being able to go over and visit her family on the other side. It just gave her a little bit more um, of an option to get out a little bit. It was a really neat experience being able to talk to her. I did feel really bad because of her stroke. She had a really hard time being able to say what she wanted to say. She kept telling me the words were in her brain, but she had a hard time moving the words from her brain to her mouth, which really frustrated her. She had been in college when this happened, so she was hoping to be able to get restored completely so she could go back to college and finish her degree. Her five-year-old daughter, Ivy, was a bundle of energy and the girls took turns hanging out and playing with her. Hannah and Megan were very brave. They allowed her to do her make their makeup the one day, which was quite an interesting experience. And um, I don't think they enjoyed it quite as much as she did. Fletcher was very much into sports and loved showing me all of his medals and talking about the games that he played. And I think he enjoyed knowing some of the guys in the youth group also played those sports. He finally got brave enough at the end of the two days to go out and to talk to some of the guys and to hang out on the deck a while. They were finishing working up, so that was really neat. Um, at the end, before we went to go leave, the girls decided to go in and have a time of prayer with Kate. And it was such a neat experience being able to pray for her and her recovery and just getting over the fear from the flood. And I was just really impressed with how each of the girls took time to pray for her and get out of their comfort zone a little. So that, that was really neat to me. Um, because of that prayer, the boyfriend then followed me out of the house and, um, he wanted to talk about God a little bit. They would not have really been believers, but he said that because of this whole experience with her having her stroke, they realized there is a God out there and they've really been trying to turn their lives around and find out more about him. She had had her stroke when they were in town for a parade. And because of that, they were only minutes away from a hospital. If they would have had the stroke when she was at home, um, she would not have been able to get there fast enough. The doctor said she would not have survived. So they really felt like it was a God thing the way it happened. So it was a really neat conversation to talk to him about God and just be able to reinforce to him that, yes, there is a God out there and um, just to be able to encourage him a little bit. So that was um, probably one of the most neat things for me with being with that family that those two days. Um, one of my most favorite things about the trip was having meals made because that is definitely a break for me. So that was fun, but I would have to say the important thing that was the most favorite thing for me is just seeing the youth get out of their comfort zone, um, being pushed to do things that they normally wouldn't do, and just getting to know them as a whole. 
um, they start to feel like my own kids after a while. So yeah, it was a good week. Thanks. So the next few pictures here will be from Catherine's house. Um, that was the deck that we tore down and rebuilt. That was the footbridge. Um, the logs were still there from before. We just had to re-level them and, and then put new lumber on top of them. That's Ivy, uh, the makeup specialist. I hear some, see some smiles over here. Uh, it's just some of the work being done. And that, that stream right now is only six inches deep, you know. But when that flood happened, it just completely filled up and went over. There's the young man chatting. There's the makeup session. There's the finished. And uh, that one there, the, the girls took some time to pull some flat stones out of the creek and make a little little stone patio landing there. That was that was pretty neat on that end. All right. All right, right now Megan's going to talk about our next project, which was Coopy and Betty. This thing on, yeah. I gotta say, I'm more nervous than I thought I'd be. I'm kind of jealous of the people that got to make videos. But, anyways, I'm Megan Smoker, and I'm gonna talk about Coopy and Betty Collins. So, Coopy and Betty are a 90 year old couple that we served throughout the week. We were in Kentucky. Some of us worked on a ramp to a back porch that would be necessary in case of a fire or emergency. Coopy's wife, Betty, she had, I think there was an accident with her foot or leg. I'm not sure if anyone can correct me on that. So a ramp is kind of necessary if she's in a wheelchair. But we, well, while some of the people were working on the ramp um, to the back porch, most of us were listening to Koopy, and we would just sit around Koopy on their front porch, and he would just talk and talk and talk about his life and experiences and the most random things. I'm not exactly sure if his stories were 100% true, but either way, <laughs> They were entertaining and showed his heart for Jesus. While some of us listened to Koopy, others were inside talking to Betty. I didn't talk to Betty too much, but as I said, she had an accident with her leg or foot, and then she needed the ramp. However, I do know that her current state while we were there was an improvement from what it previously was. So experience mission, as Maria kind of covered, is really big on relationships over projects. And the time we spent building relationships with Koopy and Betty proved that taking time to listen to someone can have more of an impact than vigorously working to get something done as soon as possible. I know this was a challenge for most of us as we're used to trying to get as much possible done in the least amount of time. I think we all had to open our minds and hearts to this new perspective as we learned what it meant to show the love of Christ through our listening skills rather than our Lancaster County work ethics. Sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> By the end of the week, we had finished the back porch ramp and it was time to say goodbye to the Collins. Something that stuck out to me was when a few of us gathered around Betty to pray for her. It was amazing to see how touched and thankful Betty was for us when it was really Jesus using us to make an impact. If there was one thing I took away from our trip to Pikeville, it would be that listening to someone is one of the most important ways to show that you care. I think we all discovered this as everyone's real personalities mixed with tiredness started to shine through. I think it's hard to say that you truly know a person until you're forced to spend a week with them in close proximities. But overall, this trip opened my eyes to the love of Christ in a new way that I had not seen before. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, of course, that's Koopy there. Koopy was from the town of Mick Roberts. If you want to Google Mick Roberts, you might find it. You might not. Uh, but he, he was proud to tell you he was the oldest man in the town. He was 91 years old, and he had story upon story upon story to tell anybody that would listen. We did a lot of listening at Koopy's house. We did not do a whole, a whole lot of talking at Koopy's house. Um, stories even far back from when they had uh, bootlegging and the dry and the wet counties next to each other and just, you know, stories that, you know, kind of, to me anyway, um, were interesting because it was something that I, I really had no experience with or, or anything like that. All right, somebody's going to talk about Ben Reagan. Yeah. Hi, I'm Reagan. Um, some of us uh, got to go, um, had the opportunity to go and serve um, two couples 
um, they were neighbors, um, Bear and Betty. Bear had an um, amputated leg, and so he was in a wheelchair. And I, the front porch did not have a ramp, so he was stuck in his house um, uh, for a long time. Um, so the back porch, we the porch was already built, so a group of four of us, we went and stained it, and um, we got to um, talk with him, and um, Betty, she did not, um, she really could not take care of him, Bear physically. Um, and then, so their neighbor, Reno, he has a, his wife, um, she had Alzheimer's or some, or some, something that was not, so she was in bed and she did not, um, wasn't able to talk or anything. And so he was taking care of her, his wife Libby, but also taking care of, um, Betty and Bear. Um, every chance he got, he would always be like, make sure you go say hi to Libby. She really would like it. And he would always have a smile on his face. And when it came time to clean up, he would always, whatever we needed, he would come out with dish soap to get the stains off of her hands. He got hand sanitizer. He got whatever we needed to get this um, stain off of our hands. And he was just always had a smile on his face. And he was so positive. Um, he had, um, he's been through a lot. He had, he actually worked in the coal mines. Um, so he had lots of stories of the coal mines. And um, yeah, um, one thing that just stood out to me was just nothing, nothing goes with the flow, and, or nothing is planned, and you just have to go with the flow. And, um, and just to listen to people's stories because everybody's stories are um, are all different, and I feel like that's the most important thing that um, they enjoyed. Um, just people being there and listening to them, and yeah. Thanks, Reagan. Um, one of the things I remember about uh, Reno, I wish we had pictures of both of them. We took all these pictures but didn't have pictures of either one of those couples but Reno was the neighbor to the fellow with the wheelchair ramp and he was probably in his mid 70s um, he had been in a mine explosion that hit him kind of in a central area and ruined all his muscles so he had a big lump here that was hanging out but his wife um, like Reagan alluded to was bedridden to the point that she couldn't move at all he completely had to take care of her they don't have money to put her in a kind of home or anything so he has it all to himself but he always anybody that came over come see my wife come visit my wife come see her she she couldn't open her eyes on her own if if she was awake and he wanted her to see us he had to go over and physically open her eyelids so that she could see um and that you know just wow you know just the humbling experience of you know here's a man that served in the coal mines so that the rest of the world could flip a switch and turn the lights on and you know he's living in you know He's doing okay. I mean, he's smiling, he's laughing, he's fearing God, he's living life, but it's not, it's not easy. So it was a neat experience to be able to, to meet them. And I believe Brandon's going to talk about the trip to the pregnancy center. I'm Brandon. I am 15 years old, and I live on the lower part of Oxford. I get the privilege of sharing about the Appalachian Pregnancy Care Center. Um, there was a small group of us that got to go um, the one day, it was me, Megan, Hannah, and my mom and Ethan that all went. Um, when we got there, there was a nice lady that um, brought us in, and we were talking to her, and she, um, they had a, another building, and they had moved to this bigger building, which was a lot more convenient for them. Um, so we got to share. She shared her story, and, but then she was also talking to us, so that was something new. We got to share about us. Um, then we also went upstairs and we were packing um, kind of like our shoe boxes, um, but they were for the ladies um, for after they had their baby or beforehand. So we got to put everything in ba bags and stuff. So that was fun. And then we did a lot of cleaning. 
um, around the building. Um, one thing I really thought was cool there, um, they had these things called baby bucks. Um, if the ladies or men went to meetings they had, they got baby bucks, and then they got to go into this room with clothes and um, all kinds of stuff for their kids that they got to the spend those baby bucks and use um, to get stuff. Um, one thing I really enjoyed about the trip um, was the pranks. Um, I would explain more, but we have other people that will explain about that. Okay. Uh, Victory Church. Hannah's going to share a little bit about Victory. Hi, um, my name is Hannah Martin, and I'm going to be a senior in high school. So one of the days during the trip, about uh, six or seven of us went to this small church. It was called Victory Church. And we got to help the pastor there, Carl, with um, some cleaning. That's a picture of him up there. And um, they kind of have this program at the church where they bring in like truckloads of food and clothes and other kinds of like hygiene products and then they sort them, and then people from the community can come in and they can shop for whatever they need. So I know this was a really big blessing for the people, especially after the, the flood. Um, so when the group of us went, we just helped like mop the floors and um, wash windows and just um, clean around the church. And I know um, Carl was really appreciative because the group um, did the work in a few hours that it would have taken him two or three days to do by himself. So he, he was really glad for the help and I'm glad too we got to help him out um, just in that way. Yeah, uh, I didn't get to meet Carl much, but uh, the two leaders told some neat stories about Carl and his ministry. Right before COVID happened, they got shipped all this hand sanitizer, and they said, what in the world are we going to do with all this hand sanitizer? Like skids of hand sanitizer. And then all of a sudden COVID happens, you know, so he, sh he, he liked to share that story. He also had a story about they were given some canoes or something right before the flood, and, you know, what are we going to do with these canoes? What, what, we have no use for these, and then, then the flood stuff happens. So there's just a lot of neat stories. God works in other places, too. It's, it's just pretty neat how, you know, when you just give your life to God and keep doing day to day what you're supposed to do, he shows up and he gives you what you need. But that was some, some pretty neat stories from, from Carl. All right, Reese and Johnny are going to share about, some of you might have heard the term midnight during a Sunday service the other week. Um, they're going to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah, um, I'm right up there. Megan, this is a lot more nerve wracking than I thought, but <laughs> this is, this is going to be great. Um, <laughs> so my name is Johnny Smoker, I'm 16, and I got the honors to talk about the pranks. So this is the first night, and me and Austin are a little thirsty. So to get to the, um, get to the kitchen, there's like this hallway and like the gym. And in the hallway, there's these bathrooms. So apparently Megan and Reese or washing their feet so they didn't get foot fungus or something like that. I don't know if they wanted me to share that or not. <laughs> but me and Austin, like, hear the showers going, so they, like, sneak around into the gym and see that they're washing their feet. So, like, we get into the kitchen, and we, like, get this basketball, and we, like, throw it, and it hits a chair, and it just, like, dead stops. And, like, they, like, we hear them talking about it, and then they, like, look into the gym, and then, like, a second later, we look, and they're just nowhere to be seen. They're gone in their bedroom texting us about it. So then we all go into our beds past midnight, probably, and Austin and Brandon went out, and they take a picture. I don't know if you can see. There's the six doors in the back, 
the far ones on the left, on the ground, Brennan's laying down, and you can just see two eyes under a chair. Kind of. So <laughs> I circle it and I mention it like, what's this? And they're like freaking out about it. So uh, that was great. <laughs> and then we all go to bed. So then the next night, even better. So everyone's in the kitchen for some reason. We're all like talking or whatever. And I like sneak out and they don't know I leave. But like, I like chuck a basketball way up in the air and it like bounces and they hear it. And then I, don't, I didn't think they heard it. So I did it again. And um, they come out, and I'm like, oh, no, what do I do? So I'm laying under an organ bench for about 30 minutes. My back hurt for about two weeks after that. Still hurts to this day sometimes. But I think it was all worth it, in my opinion. <laughs> so later that night, we got some string and, like, made a little loop on the table and put a basketball on it, so when you pulled it, it like fell off and bounced. And for some reason, I think, no, it was it Cameron and Brandon that somehow got the girls to come out of their room after all this was happening. I don't know how, but they're girls, so they did. And so right as they come into, <laughs> right as they come into the gym, I pull the string and it bounces. And before I can even look up, they are gone. <laughs> this is quoted from Cameron. Cameron said, before I could even leave the gym, they were already in their room. So um, I'll let Reese share her, her side of the story eventually. But, um, yeah, it was great. We had more planned, but we were told to stop because... <laughs> Yeah, we were giving them night terrors or something. And then before Reese comes up, there's another prank at the pregnancy center. So that next morning, the girls pranked us and said that they're going to build the deck and we're going to go to the pregnancy center and, like, measure girls' stomachs or something. It was... They made me change my clothes, and I did. It was not funny. But... And I don't know, Brandon and Ethan ended up going there then, though. So I guess, I guess they liked it. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, oh, another thing. For the trip, I really, it was really cool. For the deck building or whatever, I was mostly building the deck. But one time I went to get a drink. And, of course, Koopy's out there just singing his little songs, looking into the mountains and the roads, and I got to talk to him, and man, does he love to talk. They were all wondering where I was, <laughs> talking, well, listening, but yeah, it was really cool how he just, he loved to see, or I loved to see how he could just talk and talk about watching all the bears on the road and how there's that whole mountain's coal, and I don't know, I thought that was just really cool. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Reese. I am 15, and we were told to share something that would that impacted us over the trip. And something that I really realized is um, how close and powerful God really is all the time. Um, so I'm going to kind of follow up with what Johnny said. Um, he gave the guy's point of view of how none of them were scared. They just thought it was some harmless prank. But um, from the girl's point of view... It was definitely pretty scary, I would say. Um, like Johnny said, me and Megan were walking in the bathroom, and then we realized, oh my goodness, we don't want to get foot fungus, because we're walking in here barefoot. So we go to the showers, and then we hear this basketball bounce, and run back to our room. Um, the next night, we went out with Brandon and Cameron to the gym, and it happened again. So we were just even more freaked out because now it's two times in a row, not just once that it's, oh, it's just a coincidence. Now it's twice. Um, looking back, there were definitely signs that it was just the guys pranking us, but in the moment, we were too scared to think of that. So it was just craziness and so scary for us girls. But um, 
the second night when we went out with the guys um, to go hear this basketball bounce and get even more freaked out, we go back to our room, and us girls are sitting there, and we were like, well, we're on a missions trip serving these people to show Jesus' light to others, and the devil is working just as actively in the world around us, whether or not we realize that or not. Um, so we were just sitting there, and we were thinking about that. Like, we have all these things that we can be doing to help people, but the devil is here making us anxious and nervous and scared. So what do we do about this? So we sit there. Three of us girls, some of them are already sleeping or trying to go to sleep because they're not as freaked out, but three of us girls curl up in one bed, and we're sitting there, and Maria came over, and she was, we were praying with each other, and we put on some worship music to fall asleep to. Um, and as soon as that worship music was put on and after we prayed, our nerves started to calm down, so we were able to fall asleep. Um, so that was definitely the Lord working to help calm us down and everything. But um, I had texted some people back home asking for prayers because, like I said, we didn't really know what was going on. Um, so I texted people back home. One of the people that I texted was my mom. One thing that she kept reminding me over and over again is the devil has no hold on you. The Lord is with you. He can fight off whatever is there. He's so much stronger. Um, so that was a really cool thing. But yeah, the devil is working in the world around us just as actively as God is. That might be a bit of a touchy subject for some people that isn't talked about very often, but that was something that really became evident to me. Um, he's here to kill, steal, and destroy, but God is there to bring us so much more than that. Um, but something that I also learned over just that experience, if that was just a little prank and God was able to help us and calm us down, if something bigger is to happen, what else can he do to calm us and help us and be there for us. So, like I said, that was one thing that was really evident. Um, God is really strong and super duper powerful. Thanks, Reese. There's a few more pictures that Gene can go through there. That's pretty much the presentation for the morning. I will, we've got a few minutes. Any questions? Any elaboration needed or wanted on anything? I see a bunch of folks here that will soon be participating in these types of trips. Does this generate any excitement? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah? So the trip that you made, because so you've got kids in the past that have gone. Do you guys keep a good touch with the people that you've been going with? Like, oh, you guys should go. Did you ever hear from Sure. Four years ago, um, when we went to Oak, Oak Hill, Virginia, we did end up sending them letters a month or two afterwards. It typically stops there, um, you know, as if somebody wants to or certainly welcome to and able to, but I, I'm not aware of anybody that, that has kept it. doesn't mean they haven't, but yeah, there's certainly opportunities. I know there was a few people that when we came back and shared our story four years ago, they were going on a vacation down that direction. They actually stopped in and visited some of the people, you know, a couple months after we were there. So that was, that was kind of neat. Yeah, Bob's asking if we stayed in the Presbyterian Church. We did, yeah. Uh, Experience Mission, the mission group, works with Pikeville area, but then that church allows them to use the kitchen and kind of half the church they're able to use for whatever they need with the mission. So we were we were sleeping on floors in Sunday school rooms, and then they had a commercial kitchen where they'd prepare the meals in the gym area where we would eat and gather, um, but everything... Yep, sleeping bags and, and some blow-up mattresses and trying to keep things as soft as possible. But um, I guess when you're young, those hold, hard floors aren't as, aren't as bad as when you get a little older. I saw somebody. Romer. Uh, Wilmer's asking if we saw any Amish in Pikesville. He th thinks there's an Amish community down there. We did not. That doesn't mean it's not there. <laughs> it probably is. But we did not come across any Amish. Any other questions? Anything you guys want to share that you say, hey, I forgot about it? You got it. For the thing about the pranks, I remember 
me and Reese and some other people and Cameron and Brandon were in the gym and they were like, don't turn on the lights, don't turn on the lights. We got to try to lure this thing out. And looking back, it's like, how dumb were we? That like, we listened to them when they told us not to turn on the lights or our flashlights. And I don't know, I think our minds were just a little twisted and messed up from the lack of sleep, but that's just what I wanted to say. Very good. Well, I kind of want to end this with a big thank you. Um, it is the church that allows the youth these opportunities to do this, to experience this, um, whether it's through we, we get some you know funds that are budgeted to us, but we also do fundraisers. And of course, you do fundraisers in the church still, even though you're giving through the budgeting, you end up still giving even more through these fundraisers. So thank you for allowing our high schoolers, our young adults to experience a trip of this sort. Thank you for your prayers that go along with it. Um, it's just a, a fun experience, and I hope this kind of helps give you a picture of what happens. And the last picture there of, of Ethan hugging his car when he got home, He's, there were some things that were missed while we were gone. So uh, thank you all.